we all know that nowadays trends come and go at light speed. We're talking one to five days, right? A trend is here and then it's gone before we can blink. And we all know that a lot of people view film photography as a trend as well. I don't think there's any denying that there's a good amount of people that are gonna get into film for a pretty short period of time because it's the cool thing to do and then eventually drop it and move on for something else. I'm sure you've seen it plenty. And I'm sure you've also seen a lot of people now jumping on the train of kind of that early 2000s point and shoot for that super lo-fi, old school digital aesthetic. People are trying to achieve the film look, but they're trying to do it on the cheap. And for a while, I asked myself that question. Is this the new next best thing? Or is it just a passing fad? Can an old 2000s point and shoot camera live up to 35 millimeter film? Initially, my thinking was absolutely not. That these early 2000s point and shoot cameras, they weren't gonna do it, right? They can't hold a candle to 35 millimeter film. They don't really give you the same experience. You know, the, the performance, especially in low light or anything less than kind of perfect light is absolutely terrible. I wouldn't actually go out of my way and get one, but after stumbling on one, I gotta say I'm pleasantly surprised. I picked this little guy up at a garage sale uh, a little while back for 30 bucks. This camera and another film camera actually 30 bucks. So I'm gonna cut that in half and say I paid about $15 for that because I think that's fair, right? And initially I thought, you know, maybe it'll be fun to try. I, my expectations are super low. It's not gonna be film. It's not going to scratch that same itch. I wasn't really sure where it would fit into my creative process, but you know what? I have it, right? I'm gonna give it a chance. I'm not gonna just pass it off. And plus, I've heard pretty good things about this particular model. It's a original Canon PowerShot G7. Uh, people liked it back in the day. It was a big upgrade from the G6, and obviously it's not as good as Canon's current line of G7 compact cameras, but honestly, for what it is, people give it high praise. Let's make one thing clear. I'm gonna answer the question that I've just asked you, the viewer. Um, does this kind of hold a candle to 35 millimeter? Absolutely not. 35 millimeter film is pretty much better in every way than these early 2000s compact cameras, period. I don't think there's any getting around that, but that's totally okay, right? They're different. This is not 35 millimeter film, nor is it a modern digital camera. It's its own thing. And I kind of feel like it's unfair to this camera and a lot of these lo-fi early 2000s digital point and shoots to compare it to anything but themselves, right? Because after carrying this camera around for, you know, a few days, I gotta say, I like the results. Now, initially, when I got the camera, I took it outside and I took like one or two test shots and I was just not impressed. They were kind of flat, kind of dull. The resolution, the sharpness, uh, pretty much everything about this camera is pretty poor. I mean, it's got 10 megapixels. Uh, the noise looks terrible at anything after like ISO 400, even then it's not great. So on the surface, you know, on the spec sheet, this camera is largely unimpressive. It misses focus way more often than I'd like, and it cannot handle flare at all. I mean, it's absolutely terrible at handling flare. But I found at the end of the day, a lot of that stuff didn't matter because it was fun. It's a fun camera to use and it got me fun results. I think a camera like this is great for when you want a little bit more camera than a smartphone. Yeah, a smartphone is gonna take pictures that are light years beyond the quality that something like this could provide. But at least this provides a little bit more of a camera experience. This actually has like a little optical viewfinder and it's pretty easy to manage settings in manual mode. It can serve as a really nice kind of bare bones experience. And I appreciate that. I like that more than using my cell phone. In fact, I hate using my cell phone for photography. I think it's awful. I mean, if you just want to have fun and not do anything serious, take snapshots on your walks, just going to the store, whatever, this is great to throw in the bag. I mean, you could pick these up for like 10 bucks, you throw it in a bag, you don't need a case. Who cares if it breaks? I think for that low barrier of entry, you can get a lot of fun out of something like this. But that's not to say that these things have their obvious cons. I mean, for one, they're slow, they're not very feature rich, they fall flat in a lot of like technical areas that you may want as a photographer that again, a cell phone can achieve much, much better than this can. And if a really good shot does present itself, you're probably gonna wish you had any other camera on you other than this. Again, not to say that you can't take good photos with these cameras. I enjoyed the results that I got, 
But I look at some of these photos and think, man, I really wish I took this on film or took it with my Fuji. And I think that's one of the most tough to swallow cons that something like this presents. At the very least, a 35 millimeter frame is still a 35 millimeter frame. You still get the results that you would get from 35 millimeter film and all the really great stuff that comes with it. 35 millimeter has a ton of flexibility, ton of resolution, and is usable even in point and shoot cameras for reasonable size printing and you can get some really, really excellent results. The same kind of can't always be said for the results that you will get with something like this. I mean, for one, dynamic range is like non-existent. So you better get your exposure right in camera because if you don't, you're gonna have a bad time. Also, this particular camera only shoots JPEG, which I really like, for this, I don't care about that, but it would have been nice to have a raw file to like pull some, some detail out of, you know, underexposed or overexposed shots, but it's kind of not gonna happen with a JPEG file from a 10 megapixel camera that's like 10 something years old. I think if you're willing to accept a few things with a camera like this, right? It's not gonna perform well at low ISO. It's not gonna have a lot of dynamic range and things like the LCD screen just being frankly kind of useless. If you're willing to accept those trade-offs, you might find that you'll be given some really awesome things in return. For one, this is a camera that you don't have to care about. You don't have to fear breaking this. You don't have to fear this having to be protected in any way. This is a camera that you can throw to a friend. I mean, this one has an on-camera on flash. I'm sure plenty of them do. You can throw this to a friend. You can throw it in a bag. I took it to the beach the other day and I had zero fear of it getting stolen, me dropping it in the sand, overheating in the hot sun, zero. Because again, they're dirt cheap. It's, you know, $15 worth of fun for sure. And if you find the right one, right, you find the one that's a little bit higher quality, one with a really nice CCD sensor, you can get some really sweet colors out of these things. All of the photos that I'm showing, I slapped on a quick preset, did a couple little minor tweaks and called it a day. These were not heavily edited. I really didn't have to do major color work on any of these. Not that I would for the kind of results that I'd be getting with this camera. But yeah, I gotta say, the colors are really hitting nice. I, I think they're really good. I think if you approach this camera with the correct mindset, you're here to have fun, your expectations are low, you're gonna throw this in a bag and just enjoy it whenever you can pull it out and take a couple quick snaps, I think you're gonna have a good time. Planning to edit in black and white and using those CCD colors when they when they actually come out really nicely, I think you can get some fun results, stuff that's worth sharing, maybe not stuff that's worth printing or making books with, but you know, it's a nice gap filler. I personally don't like doing this type of work on 35 millimeter film because I find it wasteful, right? I'd rather have a digital camera and I think this fits the bill really, really nicely. And to get back to kind of the original question, right? Is this a passing trend? Is this a fad? Probably, right? I mean, again, objectively, it has a lot of shortcomings, but there are some fun to be had. There's some really cool things that you could do with these cameras and a lot to enjoy. Are these cameras going to be the next latest and greatest thing? I don't know. I mean, who cares? If you like the look, you like that lo-fi aesthetic, you know, you want to have some fun for a couple bucks, why not? Do a little research, find one that's better than your average, right? Two, four megapixel, little tiny compact. I actually treated this like a film camera when I was using it, right? I really just set the focus point to the center of the LCD. I barely looked at it. I pretty much just used my knowledge of exposure to guesstimate exposure and just kind of played it safe. And honestly, I didn't look at any of the photos I took as I was taking them. Look at this like a 35 millimeter roll of film that you have to wait to get developed. Take 60 shots, right? Two rolls worth of photos, then throw them up on the computer and take a look at them. And I gotta say, that was kind of fun, right? Like not, you know, looking down at every single shot that I took. I think I took 86 photos before I actually looked at them and just like looking at what I had and treating it like film. Like I had just gotten some rolls back from the lab. I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I, I, you know, I didn't realize the shots, you know, this shot came out good or this one was a dud and it didn't really work out. You know, that's kind of the fun of film and I tried to infuse that into my use of this camera. And I'm probably gonna do that going forward. I think I'm gonna hold on to this thing. I mean, again, just to like take out for a walk, probably walk to the store in a little bit and just take it and take some snaps and not really care. It's like 90 something degrees out, who cares if it overheats? No problem. 
it's fun, right? So let me know what you think. Do you have an early 2000s point and shoot and do you use it? Do you get good results? Do you like the kind of lo-fi aesthetic does it that it provides? Or do you think that these are all talk and no substance and they're kind of just like a waste of time and money? Love to hear what you have to say. Anyway, my name is Zach. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video. If you liked it, you know, throw it a like, sub, you know the drill. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.